welcome. I am so happy that you are here and uh, I'm happy that you've joined me for this second installment of my Rocketman costume build. In case you missed the first video, you can find it here or I'll have it linked below. Today I'm going to talk about how I approach the planning and gathering stage of a costume. As a quick reminder, I believe that every costume build consists of three stages. That's the planning and gathering stage, the building stage, and the finishing stage. I am currently firmly and positively rooted in the planning and gathering stage still. Before we dive into all of that, please like and subscribe if you have not already. I've also started a Ko-fi page, so if you are feeling generous and would like to donate, you can leave me a digital tip. The link is in my description. All of the proceeds from Ko-fi are going to go directly into this rocket man build. With all of that being said, let's get on to the planning and gathering stage, shall we? I begin every costume the exact same way. I ask myself these three questions. Is this build possible? Is it cheaper to buy? Can I find shoes? To break it down a little bit more, is this build possible? Is it even in my wheelhouse? Yeah, there might be a few new things to try, new methods to attempt, but is that even something I'm interested in or do I even think that I have a shot at getting this right. The next question I ask, is it cheaper to buy? Don't come at me. My time is valuable. Your time is valuable. If it is cheaper to buy a decent quality costume, I'm going to go that method. Now for the Rocketman costume, that doesn't exist unless I'm going to go to somebody and have them do it for me, in which case for sure it's not going to be cheaper and not many people. There are people that have done this costume before, but I have not found one that sells that costume for this, for this specific instance. No, it, do, it is not cheaper to buy because it doesn't exist anywhere. And then the last question that I always have to ask myself is, can I find shoes? I think shoes are the most difficult thing to source for a costume. For me, I'm not necessarily going for screen accurate for this costume. So kind of just getting in that ballpark. Do I think I can find something in that ballpark, even if it means painting or changing a few things? Is it possible? If I ask myself, is this build possible? I think so. Is it cheaper to buy? Nope. And can I find shoes? Yes. If I answer yes, no, yes, I'm ready to kind of move on and get into this costume a little bit more. If I answer the opposite to any of those questions, it's a non-starter. I'm not even going to go any further. I'm not going to waste my time. If I do answer yes, no, yes to those questions, this is where it really starts to get fun for me because this is the research part. And I love a good research on a costume. Very first thing I always do is look at costume images. So I will go to Pinterest, I'll go to Google, and I'll just try and find as many pictures as I possibly can for this costume. I also research unfamiliar methods. So in this case, I've never bedazzled anything before. And I know I, I feel like I kind of give off this appearance that I bedazzle a lot of things and never once in my life have I bedazzled a thing. I need to kind of look up methods for that. I know there's kind of different things that you can do. Is there an easier approach? Is there a better approach based on the fabric that I'm using? That's all stuff that I get to look up in this part, in this stage. I also start to make a list of what I need to build this costume. If I'm looking at this picture, I can automatically know I'm going to need fabric. Is it spandex? Is it neoprene? Not really sure. So I'll write both of those down so I can kind of get a price gauge for both of them. Rhinestones. I can see that there's orange, there's red, there's yellow, there's black, there's white slash clear. Feathers. I know that it's red and black, but I also know that if you flip around because I've researched the angles, there's orange feathers on the back. The rose colored glasses. I can see that those are bedazzled. I'm probably going to have to buy heart shaped glasses and then bedazzle them later. The plastic horns, I could probably do that with some Morbla. I can see the metal belt buckle. I can see his rings. I'm going to have to figure out the wing construction, the boots. I feel like I should mention that all of this sort of happens simultaneously. I'm not researching the unfamiliar methods and then, okay, I've thought of everything I can. Now I'm going to come over here and do all of these. No, I kind of interchange like, oh, okay, I can see the bedazzling. Let me look that up. Okay, now I'm going to come over here. I've never really worked with feathers. What does that mean? How do I do this? And I kind of just pull from both of those things at the same time. That's just what works easiest for my brain. Might not work for you, but that's how my brain works. 
The next thing I do is just go to Amazon and create a wish list specifically for this costume, and then I'll research dump anything that I can find. So in this case, if it's different kinds of feathers, different kinds of rhinestones, any anything that's going to kind of help me build this costume. And I don't always use Amazon. I don't exclusively purchase through Amazon. It's just kind of an easy way for me to keep everything in one spot and kind of price check. I also use Honey, and this is not sponsored even a tiny little bit, but I just think that it works really well. It tells you on Amazon if this is the lowest price possible, and I'm a cheapo, so I like knowing if this is the cheapest price, or maybe if I just wait a couple of weeks, maybe it'll drop a little bit lower. I like to use that. You certainly don't have to. When I have sort of this generic list created, I will start deep diving on individual things within that list so that I can see what I need in addition to what I already have in my list. So like fabric, obviously I know that I'm going to need fabric, but I'm also going to need fabric patterns. I'm not going to be able to just like throw this on a mannequin and it's the costume I need patterns to work off of. I also know that, okay, now that I've kind of looked into this a little bit more, I can kind of see the notions that I'm going to need. So what kind of zippers, what kind of maybe Velcro or buttons or maybe even magnets I might even be able to use. I'm, I'm learning there's so many different kinds of feathers and to get sort of that same vibe, what kind of feathers were used for this costume. If I'm looking at this costume, I can see that the collar is standing up really well. Is it stabilizer? Is it foam? What can I do to kind of make this as successful as I can? Looking at the wings, what's going to be the lightest method because what happens on a movie set versus walking around a con all day in this costume, it's not necessarily going to be the same construction. So what's the lightest weight thing that I can use? I'm doing this like it's a backpack. I don't know why. When it comes to those rhinestones, am I just gluing them? Am I going to use hot fix? Which one's going to be better for my specific costume? Hopefully as, as I'm building this costume, I can kind of deep dive individually as I'm building it to kind of explain why, what decisions I made and why I made them. Now is when I'm going to start buying the smaller items just to kind of get the ball rolling and kind of build my confidence with this costume. And I always start by grabbing a tote of some sort to kind of collect everything. And for this, my friend Reed actually gave this to me a couple of years ago and it's been waiting for its moment to be used properly. I absolutely love this bag and I've been wanting to use it for something. And I feel like this is the perfect costume for this tote. And I, I reuse totes, I should say that. I don't just like, this is the only tote I'll ever use for this costume. And like, no, I'll probably use it for other stuff too. But like, for the time being, this costume is just for this tote. Here's what I've purchased so far. If you are a costume lover, find these books. These costume books are so amazing. Not only do they have these great, great photos within them that show you different angles of the costume that you might not see, but sometimes those costumes are like opened up a little bit more and you can really get in there and see what the innards look like. And that's just fascinating on its own. Sometimes there's designer notes and they really are just stunning books. Not every film and TV series has one of these, but if you are looking into a costume, look up one of these books. You never know. I have one for this movie, I have one for Game of Thrones, and I have one for uh, Miss Maisel, and they are absolutely stunning books, and I cannot say enough good things about these. I use a beautiful and very technical sticky note system to mark any time this costume appears in this book. And so you can see there's quite a few sticky notes in there, so it really does make a huge difference. I love this book so much. And I will also, hold on, if I could just get editing Lindsay's attention really quick, really quick, if you could just like write down where this came from and how much it cost, just so that we're all on the same page. Thank you. The next thing that I purchased were swatches from Fabric Wholesale Direct. I was trying to find stretchy orange fabric, so I went, these are all three different oranges. They all claim to be just orange, and as you can see, they are very different. And if I'm looking at the picture, none of them really seemed like they were right. You know what I mean? And I had gotten this one because this is the fabric that I was hoping to get, but they didn't have it in orange, but I also need gold for the inside of that collar. So I thought maybe I would try to find gold and see how that looked and 
so I could feel out the fabric some. Never underestimate a swatch because I ended up not going with any of these options, but I don't regret getting them because I would hate to have gotten so much fabric and then just be like, oh, well, I hate this, this doesn't work and not be able to return it or have any use for it. So having the option of getting these has saved me a lot of money. Also, I did end up finding something I hope is going to work for this. Time will tell, but I did end up finding some really nice orange fabric. Now it's not as shiny as the movie fabric. This is orange spandex that I got from Amazon and it is a tablecloth. It came in a two pack. I'm hoping that I'll be able to do this. These are huge. This is for like six foot tables. There's tons of fabric here. So I'm hoping that I'll be able to make something with it. If it works, fantastic. If maybe I'll end up making just the mock-up with this and then I can find some other fabric. But right now I'm pretty happy with this. I'm going to be able to get a lot of use out of this fabric. I, I feel like that's one of the things you have to really keep an open mind with when you're building something is don't necessarily think in generic terms. Yes, you can go to fabric websites, but also kind of keep your mind open to other possibilities. I don't even know how I got down this rabbit hole. In looking up other things, I came across this and I was like, well, why not? Let's give it a shot and hopefully this works. That'd be, that'd make it an even better story. Like, yeah, I made this Rocket Man costume. It's made out of tablecloths. The next thing I purchased were some sunglasses and actually I bought two pairs of sunglasses. The first is like a regular pair of sunglasses and I wear them all the time, but these sunglasses, I feel like they're perfect. While they don't, they're not full pink, I don't mind that. I was able to get a two pack of these and like I said, these are pretty good quality and they came with a tiny little screwdriver as well. So I've got nothing bad to say about these. The next thing I got was this hot fix kit. I got it from Amazon. What I really like about this hot fix kit is that it's not just the hot fix applicator. It also came with some stones. And so I'll be able to practice a little bit before I actually start on this costume, which to me is fantastic. And it has like a bunch of different sizes. So that feels like a win. And the nice thing that I learned about hot fix is that just because it has a hot fix on it doesn't mean that you can't just use normal glue. So I'll probably use E6000 for the glasses. I'll be able to use these. I don't have to purchase additional stones for that. So that to me is a win-win. I was able to find an orange zipper. I got this from Joann's. It's really long. I know from looking at the picture that there was sort of an outdoor or not. Why do I keep calling it an outdoor zipper? It's not an outdoor zipper. It's outerwear zipper, which you would wear outdoors. So I feel like I'm still a little bit right. Something to keep in mind. I discovered this after I purchased this. So I haven't used this website before, but I did see somebody on Instagram had pointed it out. So I'm going to point it out to you just so you know, there is a company called Walwick. I'm so sorry if that's on Walwalk and they have a ton of notions of multiple colors and it's all much cheaper than Joann's. If I ever have the chance to order from them, I definitely will in the future. I also purchased just like a variety of like hand sewing needles. I got some ballpoint needles for the spandex because I read that that's kind of the better option for sewing needles. And then I got a little storage box for when I am rhinestoning, I can kind of keep them all in here. So the last thing that I have purchased so far are some patterns. Now, I never pay full price for a pattern and I never will because that's ridiculous. I wait until McCall's, till Simplicity, till any of them have sales at Joann's and then I'll go in and I'll get a few different things because why should you pay full price for a pattern? when you don't have to. I ended up picking these three patterns just because I thought that they kind of gave me what I was looking for as far as what I am hoping to make this costume. So I kind of, it was more of like an inspiration pull than necessarily because it was exactly like 
I see on screen. I have McCall's 7910. Obviously this is not the same jumpsuit that Taryn wears, but I'm also, I don't have the same body as him. If I wanna keep it more feminine, this is a great option, or I can easily just modify it so it's a little bit more of a scoop neck rather than a plunging V. But I think that this is gonna be a great start. I like that it has the bell bottoms, but these specific bell bottoms aren't quite right because it's more form-fitting and this is a looser leg so for that I have this pattern McCall's 8368 and those are some bell bottoms babe this is exactly what I want for the pants and if I can kind of look at the patterning maybe I can use this as an inspiration for the arms because the arms also have that sort of bell sleeve to them as well and the last one that I have is McCall's 6819 and it is a costume pattern what i like about this one is the collar i am terrible notoriously terrible at collars so this one is exactly what i'm thinking if i add up everything that i've purchased so far i'm at 117 dollars and 81 cents this is just the beginning and i can start working on it i have no idea how much bedazzling i'm gonna have to do i know it's a lot if i can sort of slowly purchase these things it kind of takes the sting off of purchasing everything at once. The next video that I'll be doing for this costume is probably going to be to bedazzle those sunglasses because I've never bedazzled anything and this feels like the right thing to just get it out of the way without using the hot fix where I'm not, I'm familiar with E6000. I know how to work with E6000. Don't necessarily know how to work with the hot fix yet. So slow and steady, babe, slow and steady. We've got this. It's gonna be great. It's gonna turn out fantastic. I am just really excited to start jumping into this i'm tired of like let me explain to you what i'm going to do like no let's let's get to building yeah like i said i'm really excited to get started on this costume and let's just kind of ease into it with something simple let's bedazzle some sunglasses next and i will see you in my next video take it easy